fox walks into a field on a warm summer day and suddenly he notices a handful of delicious grapes. Just what I want to satisfy my hunger. The fox backs up a few steps, rushes and leaps, but it cannot quite grab the grapes. It attempts a variety of methods to get to the fruits, but to no avail. It eventually gives up but its hunger forces it to keep hunting for food. The unfortunate fox stumbles into a well while roaming alone through the woodland in search of food. He waits for rescue because he cannot get out. Because no animal passes by, it appears as if the fox has been waiting for an eternity. Due to his hunger, the fox attempts to shout for assistance, but cannot do so loudly enough. Luckily, a goat traveling through the verdant plains hears the howling of the fox. The goat decides to investigate what it is that the fox wants. The goat inquires about why he is there. Why are you here, fox? Is everything okay? The cunning fox warns the goat that a severe drought is approaching. So he is on his order to guarantee that he has plenty of water to last the duration of the drought. The foolish goat believes the fox and goes into the well without hesitation. The fox engages the goat with many scary stories about how the drought will wipe out other animals to create empathy. The fox uses his cunning way to instill fear in the goat so that he will get close to him. The goat falls into the fox's trap and when he gets closer to him, he grabs the goat swiftly jumps on its back and uses its horns to get at the top and grab the grapes. The fox saves himself, leaving the goat in the well. The moral of the story is to be cautious when trusting the advice of a person in trouble because they may end up dragging you in the predicaments. A very long time ago, in a very small town, there were two friends, Javert the bird and Thomas the bear. Every day, Javert and Thomas played together in which they had so much fun. One day, Javert the bird kicked the ball so hard that it fell on the very top of a tree. Thomas, that was very agile, decided to go up the tree and try to bring the ball down. Let's go, Thomas. You can do it. You are the best. Thomas was successful as he was able to reach the top of the tree and threw the ball back to Javert. On the way down, Thomas noticed a hole in the tree. He got curious and decided to look inside. To his surprise, he noticed a small door. Thomas the bear sneaked his hand in the hole and tried to open this little door. As soon as he opened the door, he scented a delicious smell of chocolate. Thomas was surprised and he decided to look back in and he couldn't believe what he saw. There were dozens of chocolates wrapped with shiny papers of all colors. Wow, this is amazing. Thomas the bear started to grab as many chocolates as he could and he also started to make the chocolates rain down to his friend Javert the bird who couldn't believe how amazing this was. After a long afternoon of the kids enjoying the chocolates that the tree gave them, they came back to their houses with much joy and happiness, bringing their pockets and hands full of chocolates. The next day in the early morning, Javert the bird and Thomas the bear came back to the tree to look for more chocolates. 
but they were surprised as the tree was not there. Suddenly, an old wise turtle with a long white beard appeared and asked, Hi kids, are you guys looking for the generous tree? Yes, responded the kids. Well, you kids are very fortunate to have seen this tree as it only appears every 20 years and in different parts of the world to give joy and happiness to the kids who discover him. This time, you guys were the lucky kids that were able to taste those delicious chocolates. In 20 more years, you guys will be bigger and it will be other kids that will enjoy the happiness provided by the generous tree. And someday, you'll be able to tell this story to your sons and grandsons. As the kids were thinking of what the old turtle told them, puff, suddenly the old turtle disappeared, just leaving behind some leaves of the tree that were blown by the wind. The lesson of this story is that in any moment of our lives, we can be surprised with an amazing gift. The Great Lion In a very far away jungle lived the greatest lion, which everyone respected and loved because of how courageous and strong he was. The great lion was so strong that all the animals in the jungle could hear him when he roared, and they waited patiently for his commands. Roar! One day, everyone noticed that the lion was very quiet, and he lay under a tree. Suddenly, the jungle animals noticed that the lion was looking for something around the jungle. They finally saw that he carried some wood and some carbon. Everyone asked, what is the great lion doing? One little baby lizard sneaked over and noticed that the great lion was writing all his life stories that forged him into the respectful and wise lion that he became. Why are you writing all these amazing stories, Great Lion? The lion got surprised as the baby lizard approached him with no fear. I am getting old, and I am afraid I am losing my memory. I need to write all the great lessons I learned throughout my life before it is too late. Now the lion didn't roar as strong as before, and you could barely hear his voice. As time went by, animals felt more confident to get closer to the lion as they saw him getting older. Everyone in the jungle still admired the great lion as he was the only one who could read and write in the entire jungle. As time went by, animals surrounded the lion to listen to his great stories. The great lion was very happy and joyful when telling his stories to the animals in the jungle. The great lion never lost the position of being respected and admired by the jungle. His crown shined until the last of his days. The moral of the story is that even with our weaknesses in physical appearances, the identity and values of a person will conserve the same for people with a great heart. time ago, the city mouse and the field mouse were very good friends. One day, the country mouse invited his pal, the city mouse, to come visit him at his place. Hey, my friend, town mouse, I would love to invite you to my place in the countryside so we can play and enjoy the day. Yes, of course. That sounds amazing. The city mouse packed his bags and went to visit his country friend. 
During dinner, the country mouse served the town mouse barley corns and roots. The food was not so good for the town mouse because he was used to eating fancy foods. Field mouse, why does the food taste like this? I feel I'm getting sick. The city mouse stands up from the table feeling dizzy and with a tough up feeling. Why did you give me this food so bad? Field mouse, even the ants live in the better place. The field mouse felt sad after listening to what the city mouse told him. Field mouse, I would like to invite you to my place in town to see the good life of living in town. So when going back to town, he took the country mouse with him. After arrival, the town mouse showed the country mouse a ladder leading to a sack containing flour and oatmeal, honey and figs. The field mouse had never experienced something like that before. He sat to eat the luxurious food his friend offered. But even before finishing eating, the door was opened and somebody entered the place. Run! What? How? When? The two friends had to run for their lives, where they hid in a very uncomfortable hole. Eventually, when everything settled down, they got out. Only the door opened again, and they had to hide again. Why do you have to hide, city mouse? The city cat is my neighbor, and he comes to scare me every day. You have all the luxurious life of the city, but you are not safe and scared to be found and surrounded by many dangers. Whereas in my place I enjoy roots and corns peacefully. City Mouse, I am your friend and you are always welcome in my house for a peaceful and happy life. The moral of the story is, enjoy the little things you have even though it is not much. Because you don't know what the person who has all goes through to get the luxury they have.